Right, hiya. So as a lot of you know, I actually went to Iceland last month. Um, but what some of you may not know is the fact that I went to Iceland and one of the decisive factors about going to Iceland is the fact that one of my subscribers actually lives there and actually offered to like give me a tour around the country and, you know, spend the week I had there with him. And, you know, obviously he knows the country well, so and he speaks Icelandic as well. So he was able to help me through that and help me with my week there. Uh, he certainly did that and meeting him was such a great experience and you know he was also the first ever asexual that I'd actually met in person so obviously you know have, being an asexual youtuber I speak to asexuals all the time through youtube through people that watch my videos um, and through people that contact me through my videos but never have I ever met one in person so it's a whole different experience. Obviously, there's no, you know, banner over somebody's head saying they're asexual. So I could have met an asexual before and they've just not been open about it. But this was the first ever time that I've actually had conversations about asexuality to someone that's also, you know, asexual themselves. And it was definitely an interesting experience. So the first thing I learned through speaking to him was just because we're asexual, it just didn't mean that we're the same. Um, so there were so many differences uh, between our two sexualities, despite being both being asexual. And I think that's something that, you know, it's quite hard for people to grasp. And, you know, people sort of assume, you know, if there's two asexuals there, that they're going to be like the same and have the same, uh, you know, desires and same romantic attraction, etc. Um, but I learned so much through speaking to him and his stories and everything like that. And, you know, he opened up and it was just easy I guess and it was just really nice to speak to somebody that had similar experiences but had very different experiences as well for example uh, this guy just had never like sort of he just so a lot of people tell him that um Icelandic girls are really pretty and they ask him you know is this true you know is it true that Icelandic girls are pretty but he he can't tell them because he just doesn't see you know he can't look at somebody and think yeah you know they're you know kind of I find them really really attractive and them not so much you know there's just no sort of desire or attraction there he just doesn't get that and it's just really interesting to hear these stories so he's never really had like crushes like that due to um attractiveness or anything like that it's it's much deeper for him and um he was talking about you know by looking into somebody's eyes that's how he really de defines beauty so he can see through people's eyes you know um if they're his type or not really or if they're hiding something you can really read people like that and it was just really interesting to hear how different we were in that aspect so if people know me obviously I still despite being asexual I still can tell if a girl's really attracted I still be attracted to a girl based on her um, physical appearance and I still love the female body at the end of the day and still get turned on by that but I just don't have any sexual attraction at all and I have no desire for sex whatsoever so again, it's just one of those things where asexuality is just, there's, there could be 10 different people in a room, all asexual, but all so different. There's so many subcategories of asexuality. You know, you can get people that are homoromantic people, or heteromantic people, or biromantic people, or aromantic people, or demisexual. All of these branch under the asexual spectrum. And it's just, you know, it's something that people need to grasp really, how different we all are. And I think, that's again, you know, with awareness is spread about asexuality. It's not just asexuality is, you know, somebody who has uh, little to no sexual desire. It's so much more than that. You know, there's so many subcategories that need to be sort of elaborated on when it is talked about. And um, just learning about this guy's stories and, you know, learning about how he's grown up through this. Because you also forget that, you know, when he's telling you all this, he's grown up with this and he's, you know, obviously through puberty and stuff, when everyone else was experiencing sexual desire, he obviously had to, you know, you know, everybody's, you know, talking about, you know, that, oh, do you find that girl attractive? Do you find her hot? Do you find whatever? And obviously him not having it, of course it's scary, you know? And, you know, obviously I found it hard as well. And, you know, when people, all of my peers were just like, you know, who do you want to fuck? Who do you want to have sex with? And I'm just like, what are we meant to are we meant to have sexual attraction is that a thing so i completely understand how hard it is obviously not to that degree and it's just it's you know i would definitely like to do more of that i would love to speak to a lot more of you in person i think in person or on a live stream or you know just face to face you can get just a lot more 
I don't want to use the word intimate, but I think intimate's, intimate's sort of like a relevant word just to try and, you know, it's just a lot more than me doing a video and you commenting or you private messaging me just in text, you know, you just, you learn a lot more in person when you, you know, can see the emotion in him and, you know, you can see him reflecting on the stories that he's experienced and it's just really interesting and I find it really interesting to listen to. And I'm really thankful for the trip, not just for all of the experiences and the aesthetics of the country, but also for all his stories and him showing me around and everything like that. It's an experience I'll never forget. And it's some, something I really want to do more of. So, like, I'm looking to travel a lot more, as a lot of you know, um, hopefully in the next year or so. Um, so, you know, if you're a subscriber, if you're watching this video right now and you think, you know, I would, wouldn't mind meeting Alex, which is my name, if you didn't know, it's not just Cookie Monster. Um, if you know, and you want me to come to your country, just send me a message, send me, you know, whatever. You know, you might be too nervous to to this point, but this might be sort of like somebody to really do. And I, I would just love to have more experiences like that. So if we can work something out, it's not me joking around, it's me being deadly serious. I mean, I did it for Iceland, it was so spontaneous, so impromptu. Like, I never thought at the start of this year that I would be going to Iceland. But two months into it, I went to Iceland and I met a subscriber and I spent a week with a subscriber. And it's somebody that I'd never spoken to before this year started. Never, ever spoken to him. And yet I ended up speaking, a, a, a spending a week with him, with pretty much a complete stranger, who's now I turn out to speak to all the time because we got on really well and I was really thankful to meet him. So... If you're watching this video, thank you for the experience. Uh, despite not seeing the Northern Lights, it was a really unforgettable one. And message me if you're interested or if you just want to speak or, you know, it's just interesting hearing everybody's stories. And I would like to also, you know, perhaps even create like sort of my own mini documentary series. I spoke about it on the live stream as well. But like if I gathered a lot of people's stories and a lot of people, you know, it could be any minority sexuality or just someone that's, just your own story basically of growing up and uh, being marginalized and being different from everybody else and just creating this sort of collage of this and people just talking i think it would be something that's really powerful um for those that know me well um i this time last year actually i was in a bbc documentary here in the uk and i ended up pulling out on that because um i knew it would be the biggest pu bit of publicity that i'd ever have and basically they put words in my mouth too often they were like oh say this and say that you know and i would answer a question in a way and they'll be like you can't answer it like that i need you to answer it like this so they would sort of so the answers that i were giving they would reverse it and i didn't want it to be fake i didn't want it to be not the truth and that's what my videos are they're all the truth you know it's me actually speaking it's me that edits my videos it's not very well but you know i try and it's me that does all the work. So um, if if I created a documentary, that's exactly what it would be. Um, and obviously I understand that a lot more and I have a lot of empathy, a lot of sympathy because I am asexual myself. Um, so it would be cool to develop that and, you know, go to different countries, speak about and how different cultures, you know, treat asexuality and treat minority sexualities. I think it's really interesting. Um, so if, you, if you're willing to be part of it, if you're interested in it, it's obviously very speculative at the moment. It's not something that's definitely going ahead. But if, you know, if I get enough feedback or enough people interested, then it's something that I'll definitely really want to go ahead with. So hopefully that's going to be a possibility. So thank you for watching and I'll speak to you very soon.